Welcome to the program. The BBC has new evidence that China is building a vast network of internment camps for its Muslim population. Experts say one facility we've identified could be the biggest detention center in the world. It's thought as many as a million Muslim Uyghurs are being held without trial in the western region of Xinjiang. China denies the claims, saying it has a program of vocational training centers needed to combat the threat of terrorism. But the BBC has seen analysis that suggests the number of secure prison-like facilities in the area has more than doubled in the past two years. Our China correspondent John Sudworth has this special report. In Xinjiang, displays of police might are everywhere. But there's something here they don't want you to see. Uh, Huge fences all around it, look. Behind these blue steel walls in a former school is what China calls a vocational training center. But it looks more like a prison. Nearby, relatives queue up to visit. From above, the grim details can be picked out. Last year, the school had a football pitch. Today, it's covered with what look like accommodation blocks. Watchtowers are visible. On a corner, just outside the camp fence, we stop to speak to a family. What are you guys doing here? Some officials try to stop us filming, but another intervenes. Let them speak, she says. I ask who they're visiting. My dad, he replies. The dad's in China denies it is detaining Muslims in Xinjiang. In response to the allegations, state TV has been showing classrooms of supposedly grateful adults willingly undergoing re-education. Without this, I might have followed religious extremists, this woman says. But the BBC has seen new, detailed satellite analysis of dozens of suspected camps across Xinjiang. Few of them look much like schools. This giant compound is surrounded by a high wall with 16 watchtowers. We try to approach the site by car. Look at this. Only to discover that it's being expanded wow. on a massive scale. It's like a city. Then the police block our way. <laughs> if this really is all about education, then why the effort to stop us getting close? Impressive thing is that. The satellite analysts show us a more recent image. It's clear how much the site has grown. Everything double. Double, double even more than double. The, the but the team is able to show that this one camp is part of something much bigger by identifying many other similar secure facilities right across Xinjiang. Oh, this is new. Plotting their growth over time shows just how fast they're being built. Satellites see beyond what the human eye can see. As the years pass, we have detected that the number of infrastructures being built increases, and most significantly in the past two years. And prison design experts tell us this could now be one of the biggest detention facilities in the world, holding 11,000 inmates at the very least. Xinjiang's main Muslim minority are known as the Uyghurs. Now many of their homes are locked and deserted. Sinister official notices on the doors say the missing are being looked after. Re-education, vocational training, to use China's euphemisms, suggests something limited and temporary. But our evidence shows that the camps and prisons being used for that purpose are large scale and seemingly permanent. The big question then is where does all of this end? And the history of mass incarcerations, of course, offers some pretty ominous precedents. From a vegetable field to another one of China's new schools, in less than six months, 
complete with watchtowers. We try to film one of them. But once again, while trying to get to the truth, we're asked to leave. John Sudworth, BBC News, Xinjiang. Well, earlier I spoke to John and asked him for more on China's reaction. Well, China says it is facing uh, the real threat of terrorism in Xinjiang, Mariko. Uh, there have, of course, been a number of violent attacks. Its answer is this program of re-education, to use its phrase, this anti-extremism training, which, as you saw in my report, China appears to suggest that Muslims are signing up for willingly. But, of course, our evidence suggests a very different reality. And, you know, take that large site at Dabancheng, the, 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 uh, the big site we tried to, to visit there. Uh, locals uh, in that town described that facility as a re-education centre, essentially as a school. But you have to ask, of course, what kind of school needs 16 watchtowers? And what do we know about what takes place inside those facilities? Well, there have been some accounts uh, from people, uh, mostly those who left in the early days of this system, believed to have begun around 2015. Uh, some of those have been able to leave Xinjiang, to, to, to leave China, and, and those accounts have been published. Uh, some of those interviews uh, have been heard. And, and the kind of things they describe is uh, a program of, um, of, of pretty, harsh, uh, a pretty harsh physical regime, often uh, cruelty and violence are alleged. Uh, and the, the, the coursework, if you like, um, again, to use China's phrase, consists of uh, rote learning of China's anti-extremism laws and things like the singing of patriotic songs. If that all sounds like brainwashing, well, some people would say that's exactly what it is. What's extraordinary, I think, is that uh, even the most, the, 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 the sort of mildest of dissent uh, in Xinjiang today, even the most moderate of Islamic practices, enough, it seems, to get you swept up into one of these camps. Uh, and um, we have a second uh, of these reports um, later this week uh, in which we will be speaking ourselves to some of those who have been in the camps, as well as to Uyghurs living outside of China who say that their own families are being swept up into this giant system of mass incarceration. Let's take you now live to Melbourne and to James Leibold, Associate Professor in Politics at La Trobe University. Professor, I know you specialise in Chinese ethnic policies and conflicts. What does all this say to you? Well, it tells us that China is continuing to expand um, these camps. Uh, it else gives us a sense of the scale of the program. What we don't really know is what's happening inside these uh, camps. Uh, the Chinese view is that there are benign free vocational training centers where people are cured of the ideological disease of religious extremism and also learn to speak Mandarin Chinese and pick up a trade. The views of relatives and, and those who have escaped these facilities paint a much different picture, one of a coercive prison-like uh, institution where people are subjected to mental and physical torture and forced to denounce their religion, their culture and their language. And what does the fact that these facilities seem to be growing say to you? Uh, do you think that people are going to be kept here long term? I mean, for a very long time? Well, there's, there's indications that China wants to normalize this process. Uh, well, that will likely mean that some people uh, do, in theory, graduate and return back to their home communities, but also that new uh, detainees will uh, enter e these facilities in the coming uh, months and years. Uh, the, the, the goal is to set up a kind of long-term process where China can uh, literally uh, politically and culturally rewire its Muslim minority population in Xinjiang, eradicating uh, concerns about religious extremism, but also more fully integrating the minority population into China and its Han cultural norms. As you say, the official Chinese line is that they're benign vocational training centers. People are learning trades and Chinese law. Other people paint a very different picture. Does China actually have to worry about international criticism here at all, or can it pretty much do what it pleases? 
Well, I think clearly they're concerned by international criticism. The, over the last week, they've uh, revised their uh, local legislation to try to retrospectively uh, legalize these camps, and they've issued a full-out uh, propaganda campaign to deflect international criticism. I think they're particularly concerned by next month's uh, periodic review of China before the UN, uh, the UN Human Rights uh, Council. Uh, so, yes, while, while China has a new sense uh, of confidence on the global stage, international criticism still uh, does uh, matter and still can get under the, the, uh, the skin of China. So where do you think Chinese policies in Xinjiang are heading, or possibly also, I guess, Tibet or other areas that the Chinese state considers troublesome? Well, essentially, China is trying to uh, work towards a final solution to its colonial mission in Xinjiang and in Tibet to eradicate any resistance to the rule of the Chinese Communist Party, as well as normalize uh, Han-defined modernity. So they've really turned up the flames of the melting pot, and um, uh, I suspect we'll see uh, similar efforts like this in, uh, in, in Tibet and uh, other parts where they have resistance from uh, ethnic minority groups. Professor, thank you very much. Pleasure. Let's take you live now to Minneapolis. Adrian Zenz is an expert on Chinese minority policy. Adrian, I know you published research on China's detention network in Xinjiang. This all seems to hark back to the era of Mao, doesn't it? What does it all tell you? Well, it says that the uh, Chinese government is really um, pursuing an ideological approach that, as you said, is very much harkening back to the roots of uh, the CCP and Chinese communism in the 1950s. Chinese prisons, Chinese security services can be pretty brutal. Is there any doubt, do you think, that human rights abuses are being committed in these facilities? I really do not believe that there is doubt, even though um, the situation in these camps likely is not consistent. Um, there can be different types of camps. Uh, they can have a slightly different focus, slightly different conditions. However, firstly, we have strong eyewitness um, evidence of what is going on in these camps. At the very least, it's very strong intimidation. Secondly, the question is, of course, why these extensive security features, um, as you have said yourselves, and as the video has very convincingly shown, these camps are basically prisons. What is being hidden? What is going on? Well, what do you think is being hidden? What do you think is going on? What is being hidden is the largest detention of an ethnic minority in recent history, unprecedented uh, even in Chinese uh, recent history. Um, according to my research, the scale of the current re-education campaign in Xinjiang likely even exceeds the entire former national re-education through labor system that China abolished in 2013. And if they are expanding at this rate, what does that tell you about likely timescales? I mean, do you think people are just going to be kept there indefinitely? Uh, most certainly not. The Chinese do have a goal. They recruited uh, thousands of police, spent billions on security and surveillance systems, establishing a very strong police state. This re-education campaign is really the next level, qualitatively and quantitatively, the next level of a securitization drive with the goal to change an entire ethnic people. What is unclear, as you have said, is how long will this take? When will this be over? I personally do not believe that this will go on for more than several years, but we all know what can happen within that time frame. And also afterwards, we still don't know how many of these people uh, can still be kept in these facilities. And just briefly, if you could, Adrian, uh, what could possibly change this policy? Does China have to worry, really, about international criticism? Um, yes and no. China is a very big and independent nation. However, especially with the Belt and Road Initiative, initiative I'm sorry, uh, China is very much now also trying to woo other countries, trying to export some of its uh, ideology and approach. China does care about its international reputation. And the most recent attempts by China to put a positive spin, to be proactive about this re-education campaign, to even have a CCTV uh, piece about it, interviewing uh, detainees and how supposedly this has been benefiting their lives, that's an entirely new approach. And it does show that the international pressure is showing some signs. Agent Zenz, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.
Let's quickly round up some more of the main news for you. The US